Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning, I just woke up. But today I wanted to go ahead and give my honest first impressions of Diablo 4. So I have played now for, I want to say, 70, 80 plus hours. Uh, I'm level 87 on my Druid. Uh, and it hasn't just been straight leveling. I mean, I have, uh, for example, uh, acquired full renown in all the zones. I've tried between two different specs. I've respect my character to try out different skills. Um, I have, uh, what else? I have farmed a shit ton of health hides. I know about the capstone dungeons. Um, I have messed around quite a bit on the Paragon board, as anyone would who's high level. I've involved myself in quite a bit of crafting. I've farmed a lot of unique items. I've tested different forms of defensive layers. So I've kind of gotten my fingers a little bit gritty uh, when it comes to Diablo 4. Of course, there is still more, um, but I figured that, you know, I've played it enough that I feel I can kind of give my opinion on the game. So, so far, up until now, I would say... I would honestly give this one of the highest ratings I would ever give a game by a, a uh, and that would basically be um, like an 8.5 out of 10. I genuinely loved the leveling experience. Uh, I played Druid from the very beginning, did not really feel that bad. Even though the skill tree is really shallow right here, uh, a lot of the customization doesn't come from the skill tree, it comes from the itemization on your gear, the aspects you're using, aspects being kind of like these unique effects. Um, and then just a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So during the leveling period, I would say it is a little bit slow and tedious, but I'll be honest, I like that style. I don't like when I play a game and I just roll my finger across my keyboard and I'm getting new skills so fast that I can't even put them on my hotbar because of how fast I'm leveling, right? I really enjoy the slower progression. However, let's keep talking about that. So I really enjoyed the, the first level 1 to 50. I was still kind of discovering the game there, but really once you hit your first capstone dungeon, and the capstone dungeon, essentially what it does, is it allows you to bump up your world tier difficulty after you have completed it. Now the reason that this is such a big thing is world tier difficulty kind of governs how difficult the game is and the items that can drop. I'm actually trying to go there right now, but I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, let's see here. So that would be in Kiovashad. I always lose myself here and forget where these towns are. Let's see if I can end up finding it here so I can show you where... Oh, here we go. Kiovashad. Yeah. So after you complete the first capstone dungeon uh, and you end up going to the next difficulty, that is when you start to unlock what is known as Hell Tides. Uh, and Hell Tides are really interesting because... When you're normally just kind of playing through the game, you'll find like a little event and you can go and do it and you get these things called obols, which are similar to blood shards and you can gamble them. However, when you get to world tier three, you get this thing called a hell tide and it's literally like the whole zone is corrupted and it will pick two zones that are adjacent. The monsters are a lot more, they feel a lot more aggressive. They really try to like mob you and there are events in there as well. In general, it was just like a very dangerous threat, which which made me want to overcome it, right? Whenever I struggle in a video game, that's where I want to overcome, and that's where the game becomes more enjoyable for me. It also introduced some form of target farming, where there are these chests around the map where you farm the Helltide currency and you can open them. So it gives you a sense of direction, you know, okay, is my weapon shit? Let me go farm weapon uh, weapon things in Helltides, etc. And then I learned that there are these more secretive parts in Helltides, but that's irrelevant. Then uh, you've got your world bosses, I feel like I wanted more from the world bosses. World bosses at this point just die in 30 seconds. Kind of a cool event to play with other players, but really they just die in quite literally 30 seconds. Uh, and then you get these things called nightmares. So the, these nightmare sigils are quite literally maps in Path of Exile. Um, overall, they're pretty fun. You know, it's exactly like Path of Exile. Um, each sigil has its own layout and each layout does not always actually have a boss. These are more objective focused. And then you can see here, you get one positive affix and a bunch of negative affixes. So just like if you're playing Path of Exile, Righteous Fire, right? What do I do? I look for uh, monsters drain your resource. Let's see if there's one that I can find here. Uh, here's one like 60% less critical strike damage, space bar. And that means it's junked and I break it down. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I will say with all the stuff in the game, I loved it. I had a great experience. However, this has started to change when I got to about level 82, 83. So what I noticed is that at around level 82, 83, the gear I was getting was not really getting stronger. 
prior, it was always getting stronger. When I first started playing, you had your normal gear as you get higher level. I believe the item power of the gear goes up when you first break that capstone dungeon and you get into tier 3, you start getting sacred items. Sacred items have, let's say, like a 20 to 30 percent overall stat boost on everything. Then you, you know, you're trying to get your character in full sacreds and then the game feels really good. And then you break into the next one, which is world tier four. And you're like, oh man, what drops here? And you know, you get ancestral pieces and you're like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool, right? I'm trying to get ancestral on everything. So ancestral, for example, like your, you can get up to like plus four on your gloves, right? And it's just cool, right? The power creep is good. And then it just kind of plummets, it just stops. And I think it has something to do with the level scaling, is really fantastic up until the mid 80s and then something weird kind of just happens where you don't really feel like the item power on your gear is going up at all which means monsters are outscaling well the thing is is i don't really care about the monsters getting stronger i care about me getting stronger with the monsters and the source of like the feeling of the gear power creep was starting to fade and it just felt more so i was grinding to get my paragon points which is cool and all, but I would like a little bit more incentive. And I was also grinding to just get like better stats on my gear, which is basically what is motivating me to keep on pushing. However, moving into the next se or the first season, this is something I would like to see addressed, right? I don't want that feeling to go away. And I think a lot of content creators or people who have hit this level are kind of in the same experience, right? It's pretty much just about refining your build at this point. Whereas I feel refining should be a lot closer to like level 100 more than anything overall though i am still very happy so like i said i enjoyed the whole way through i'm a guy who doesn't care much about graphics and i don't care much about lore and i don't really care about cutscenes. so if you take those three elements out those are like the three things blizzard focuses on the most i still thought this game was an absolute blast however again <laughs> let's talk about some things i would like to be uh, i would like to see changed in the uh in the in the first season so i think that the stash is too small um in your stash you only get like four uh what is it like four little sections so i think this is just not enough right like half of this stash is my gems and yeah i could keep upgrading them but like they drop like this right um the thing is, is you're going to want to save perfect uh, rolled legendaries for potentially switching a build, right? So that's already one tab done. Then this tab is like a gear from my other spec, right? And then other items I might use for that spec. And then this tab was other aspects that I pulled off that are not so, not maybe perfect, but are still pretty good. And then this tab was like potential upgrades for my current character, along with unique items that I've found. And that's just, it doesn't feel like enough right on top of that you can't search in here there's not really any way to like highlight what you want so a little bit wonky right so definitely some stash quality of life uh gems need their own stackable inventory when you are fighting monsters and killing bosses and doing these events they drop loot and typically what you're going to do is you're going to stand there and you're going to go click 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 and then you open your inventory and you have all these broken gems and then you you're just like trash 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 it's it's just very annoying it's unnecessary right especially when a gem takes up the same exact inventory space as your two-handed weapon you think to yourself how does that happen right <laughs> so that's that's one thing uh loot filter loot filter as i am a big poe guy i think this game is in dire need of a loot filter it can even just be something sim simple right allow us to filter off normal items sacred items ancestral items that way when we're at ancestral we could turn off normal and sacred and keep on sacred if you want money but you know turn off the normal and, and you know magic and etc so that way it feels a lot better if they want to go even more in depth they could split it by base so i'm looking for only two-handed swords i'm looking for gloves etc i think that would be a lot more enjoyable for the grind a lot of people who are playing this game want to just grind but we keep getting halted and this actually comes into another one that i forgot to put in which is your gold so majority of gold is actually picked up by picking up items and then vendoring those items to the shop that's okay but the problem is to re-roll some of my gear like my body armor it cost me three million gold for clearing a nightmare like tier 50 dungeon you get like 15k like one five k but to re-roll my body armor it cost me three mil so what this means is that majority of your gold is actually acquired by literally picking 
picking up rares and then vendoring them. But I feel like it should be the other way around. I feel like majority of the money should either be dropped during the high tier content or acquired as a bonus for doing the content, not necessarily picking up trash and then vendoring it. I just think that's a little backwards. If they want to stick with it, that's totally fine. It's just, it just seems a little bit weird, right? So like, this is literally, if I were to enchant, it is quite literally, sorry, 3.8 million gold. Uh, I know you can't, let me see if I can turn off the text here. Do, 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 do. One second, or are we sub goal off? 3.8 million GP to reroll this. Okay. Next, what do we have here? Um, give info on reroll probability on what stats can roll on the occultist. So this guy is the occultist right here. And basically what that means is when you take this piece off and you click enchant and I click reroll on this, I don't actually know what the outcome is. Yeah, I can remember and memorize stuff, but it would just be nice to see what can actually roll because I'll be honest, man, you start losing faith when you put 25 million GP into your chess piece and you say, I know it can roll this stat. I have seen it before, <laughs> but it just does not pop up. You just, it, it just feels really bad, right? Okay, uh, next up, expand aspect inventory and allow searching. So this is your aspect inventory. This is kind of like what I was talking about with the stash, but you don't know what is what, and they even have different colors, and the different colors are actually supposed to be based off of the tier. So like you have sacred, you have ancestral, but they don't actually do anything. They literally don't do anything. There's no difference. So th this feels like it was kind of rushed. Uh, I would like to see something here. Someone else even, even offered uh, a bit of info, which I don't know if is good, but basically anytime you extract it and make it like this, it should just go into its own inventory that is infinitely stackable because you're spending the money to do this you're picking up the item off the floor, and then you're going to spend money to slap it on something else. I don't understand the limitation here, right? This is all just to make our build go. It would it would suck so much if you wanted to switch to a different build and you told yourself, oh, I didn't pick up that random garbage unique or, you know, random garbage uh, legendary because I didn't have enough spa like space, in, space in my stash. Ooh, some more coffee. One second, boys. In a game where trading is so limited, I don't see why they want to limit this inventory. Okay, uh, allow us to sort our glyphs because no one uses the blue ones. So this has to do with the paragon tree, where basically if I uh, go to my paragon tree here, these down here, you can't like move them and you can't sort them at all. I would like to, I don't know, do something where I could just like right click and favorite the ones I use. So I don't have to look at all these other like poo poo ones because they just kind of clog the inventory whenever I'm upgrading and stuff. At the end of the campaign, allow us to get a reward to choose one drop only aspect. So what this means is there are aspects you can farm in a dungeon. So when you are playing through the game and you basically like highlight over a dungeon, like say, uh, let's pick a good one. Like say this, this little one right here. When you go and do this dungeon, you permanently unlock the ability to craft this like stat right here, right? The lucky hit while call of the ancients is on your action bar, etc. To do that, you can go to your codex of power here and you can actually pull it. So anything that's here is infinite. However, it always gives you a minimum roll. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's fine, right? I think that's good because um, like if you're trying to switch your build or maybe you just started playing and you're you don't want to rely on legendary drops you can quite literally farm the dungeon or not even farm run it at one time and then you can pull this aspect off of your codex and attach it onto your gear however this does not encompass all of the of the uh, aspects these are only ones that you can farm in a dungeon and acquire there are some that are drop only the ones that are drop only the way you will find them is quite literally drop only um so what I was suggesting is when you finish the campaign, maybe they allow you to pull one drop only codex. It can even be minimum roll, it does not matter, just to allow people to get their build set up. So a big common one, for example, is the shockwave aspect for pulverize. I've had people tell me they're upwards of level 70 and they have never seen this. And that just feels kind of a bit bad because it's not like your build is overpowered if you have that. It's quite literally like this is your build, right? It's not the most rare item in the world. People are just getting very unlucky. So I don't think there's anything wrong with allowing players to really kind of play the build that they want early on in the campaign or sorry, early on into the game, right? Entering like world tier three and world tier four. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Also, that item is probably going to be irrelevant in like 20, 30 levels anyway. So they're just basically getting a taste of what they want to play. Um, add a Paragon loadout. So Paragon loadout basically is right now when I wanted to switch my build. Uh, the reason I've been so hesitant on respecking is I need to basically hold my breath. So I go and then I played the root sandstorm in my head and then I have to right click every single node individually like this in the right order and then, you know, go through here, unlock here, go all the way through, right, remove that board, come through, okay, click, remove here, go all the way through, remove, okay, go all the way down, boom, and now I'm at my base, right? Then I have to add all the boards back and then rebuild the character for the new character, right? So that's a little annoying right now, especially for people who want to try different things. So I would really like if there's a Paragon load, uh, Paragon board loadout. And even if it costs you money to switch, I don't really care because you have to spend money to switch your Paragon anyway, right? So either that or just having another Paragon board would be fantastic. Okay, uh, why does gambling with Obel sometimes give me gear at minus 20 levels? So this is a weird one. I'll be like level 87. And what obols are, are these little things you get for running events. And if you go to the mysterious vendor here, the mysterious vendor will actually sell you gear, kind of like blood shards in Path of Exile, right? So, or not Path of Exile, in Diablo 3. With, what is it, Kadala? Yeah, Kadala. Okay. So if I go over here, you can actually gamble bases. Now, one thing I have noticed is sometimes there'll be like a shine. So this is like ancestral and this is like sacred. However, there are occasions. I don't think it'll do it right now, but I'll, I'll just try. Very nice. So this is like level 87, 87 and 87. So I didn't didn't get it here. But when I was lower level and I was gambling, there would quite literally be um, there would quite literally be like a 20 level difference on gear sometimes. And it just would not really make any sense. Okay, let's see what else we have. Uh, please add an option to lock gear since we have an option to junk gear. So basically what this means is um, you can, whenever you're running the dungeon, remember I told you majority of money comes from selling. So you'll run your dungeon. You'll usually sort by item level here. And then what you'll start to do is, so what that means is when you go to a vendor, you can actually right click and sell all of the junk. Problem is right now, um, what you would basically be doing is if you have an item that you like, you'll hold it to the side and then you might accidentally sell it later because you have an option to junk, but you don't have an option to lock. So having an option to lock would just be very nice. All right. And then the last one, this is the one I talked about, which is the thing I don't understand. Why does gear scaling stop after level 85 plus? Why not make gear? And then this is just a, you know, a, 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 a little effort to kind of understand. I don't know. I'm just more so curious, right? Why not make gear scale off monster? So nightmare level 100 equals level 150 mobs, right? It doesn't have to be that way. I mean, obviously that would introduce immense power creep. It just feels weird that the character scaling kind of stops at level 80 something because it it just really trivializes the, the joy of progressing your character and getting stronger right because as you go through nightmares the monsters literally go up to level 150 but i don't think the gear gets better maybe it gets more consistent with its item power i'm not 100 percent sure so anyway that's pretty much all i wanted to let you guys know um so far i'm still having a lot of fun in diablo 4 but i'm not sure how much longer i will be playing it however i'm very excited to play the first actual season now that blizzard has kind of met my expectations right going into d4 my expectations where i don't even know what this game is going to be it's by blizzard keck w uh but now that there is a really good foundation i'm expecting a lot from the next season or the first season and if it doesn't pay out boy will i have an angry rant video but anyway that's pretty much about it so i'm gonna catch you guys all later thanks everyone so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box see you guys all tomorrow